Welcome to our lesson three in Python Turtle tutorials. Um, in this lesson, we're going to look at variables and what are they and how do we use them. So I've got up here the code, one of the solution codes for our homework, which is the drawing of a square using our for loops. So you can see here if I run this, we've got our code coming up and showing the actual for loop running, um, making the actual square. So let's just run our eye over and just see, recognize what we're doing here, familiarize ourselves. We're making a window, we're changing the window size. We are then creating a turtle. Now we're running the for loop. Now this is a little bit different to what we have done previously. First off, this has changed. It previously used to say number, um, and I'm just using I. This is a coding convention um, for indexes, especially where this number is not being used. Whatever the I isn't actually being used down here, um, and it's just a counter. So it's recognized as a counter. I, there's another one you might see, which is J as well. And they, they're just simple variable names. Some other times, actually as well, Python code, they just use underscore. But I'm just gonna use I. So it's still a variable, it just hasn't got necessarily any meaning. Now this has changed, range four. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump over here to show you why that changed and what it means. So, for a number in range, this is what we're used to, for number in range, zero to five. If I run that, you'll see that it'll run through zero, one, oh, it shouldn't be zero, sorry, it should be one to five. If I run that, it'll say one, two, three, four. Okay, so, but if we wanted to start counting at zero and wanted to have four inter iterations, we can actually end with the four and it will start in, in the actual, uh, in the brackets here, in the parentheses. So I can run it and it'll say zero, one, two, three. Rightio. Um, and I've still got four iterations and I can see it ends with four. That kind of makes a little bit more sense to, to the human here. So what I can do is that Python lets you with range not actually put the first number in and it just default goes to zero. So if I do that, that's the same as saying zero comma four. And if I click on this, you'll see again, one, two, three are the numbers that it counts and the numbers it produces, but it only does four iterations, which is what we're after. We're after the number of iterations here. So hence why I've changed it back to this value. So it still gives us four sides of the square. So the question that I want to throw to you is what would you need to change in that code to change it from being a medium sized square to being a large sized triangle? Maybe let's say 200 length triangle. What are the values you need to change? I want you to look at the code, have a think, and see what are the values that need to change. Okay, have you got them? So, the values that we need to change would be this one to a three, this one to 200, and this one to 120. Okay, so if I run that, you'll see I've got a bigger triangle. So, that's all well and good. We've got a bigger triangle. Um, but what happens if I want to make a hexagon? And you've got to go through and change all these values each time. Now, each of those values that we change actually have a meaning. And in this current program, they're what we call encoding magic numbers. So magic numbers are values that are literally, they have a meaning, but in the actual code, you don't know what that meaning is. Right? The numbers that just appear there. So what we do is that we put labels on those numbers so we know what they actually mean. Because if a person didn't know what turtle is, they had no idea that this is talking about a triangle. They had no idea that they're talking about three sides here or a length of 200 or turning 120 degrees at each corner. So that's what they actually mean. So let's give them those names. So I say sides equals three. Then we say length equals 100. And then finally we say um, degrees equals 120. Okay, so if I say that and now replace the numbers down here with the labels that we've got for those numbers, copy, paste this down there, and if I run it, it will still show me my triangle. Um, oh, length should be 200, sorry. So if I run it, I still show me triangle. Awesome. 
Okay, and that means I can also reuse it a number of times. So I want to draw that same triangle in three or four different locations within my code. I always know that the sides are going to be three because I can refer to sides and that value is always going to be there. And that's what we call a single point of truth. So single point of truth is if I need to change the value of something, I change one variable or one label, the value in one label, and it should flow through the entire program. So now if I want to change this so I am running and printing um, and creating a hexagon, I'm going to simply change this. I say hexagon has six sides. I'm going to make it 100. But then here, what do I make the degrees? Well, how do I know what the degrees are? So the number of degrees in a hexagon is 60. And I know that because I did a calculation in here. My calculation in here was, okay, let's take 360 degrees, which is degrees I know that are actually in a circle, and then divide that by the number of sides, which is six, which gives me the value of six. Now, that's a calculation I've done in meat space. I've done in my brain, what we want to do is put the calculations into the program because computers are much, much better at doing those calculations than we are. Even simple ones like that, they don't make mistakes in that way. So here, what I'm actually talking about is not 60 degrees, I'm talking about 360 degrees divided by the number of sides. So if I run that, let's see if it works. And there's my hexagon. Okay. But is this variable needed? Well, I could leave it in there. It doesn't harm leaving it in there, but it's kind of adding extra lines um, which aren't necessarily needed. What I can do is I can take this calculation and put it down here where degrees are and then remove this entire line. So I know that it always turns 360 divided by sides. If I run that again, it works. So what I've done here is I've gone through and I have identified all the magic numbers and remove those by putting labels on them so all of our numbers have meanings we also have gone through and said okay um because the numbers are actually are the ones that change as well we've gone through and we have also identified all of the calculations that occur in me space and i've put those instead into the computer and then i've removed under un un some unnecessary or redundant variables which don't actually need to be in there so what can we do? There's one thing I want you to consider for your homework is when you actually, before you actually produce your homework and do your work there, I want you to look in here and there is, there is two possible magic numbers in here that we could change. Um, so we've got one here, which is the, this one, which is represents our screen. Let's put screen size. Just screen equals 500. All right, and this one is degrees in a circle. Now, whether you wish to, thing is it doesn't change. Degrees never change, so it's a constant. And I probably wouldn't put it in there because you know what it actually means. Um, I wouldn't worry about changing that one. Um, you could, if you want to, you could say degrees 360, right? Yeah, or you might even say degrees in circle okay um, and then take that and put that into here I think those who, who are keen I will notice I have actually capitalized those and had all caps because they are what we call constant the number of degrees in a circle doesn't change so therefore we um, put a capitalized because it says don't change these values so if I run that again she'll work Anyhow, so there we are. That is the whole idea of using labels or variables and labeling information to make it easier to maintain and make it easier to understand. I want you now to go and do exercises, um, lesson three, exercise one, lesson three, um, exercise two, um, and then I'll see you in the next video.